Hello and welcome. In my last video I showed you the huge pile of scrap I bought recently. There was quite a lot of interesting hardware. If you didn't see the last part, please feel free to take a look. Among all of this hardware, there were many parts which were in really good shape, but also some looked like beyond any repair. And today I'd like to try to rescue this absolutely destroyed sound card. It is an analog devices based TerraTech sound card. Actually, nothing special. It has quite good Sandblaster Pro compatible digital sound, but it also has one of the most abnormal FM implementations out there compared to the original Yamaha OPL3. I wouldn't actually say that it is super bad. I guess no, but it sounds like everything else but not the original. That's why this card is not appreciated by the retro enthusiasts. But then, why bother to rescue it? Well, because why not? And because I was curious if it is possible at all. So let's start. As you can see, the card is not only extremely dirty, it also rusted heavily. The joystick port looks really bad and there is rust all over the PCB. The crystal oscillator also have seen better days. First of all, let's give it a good clean. After washing the card with a toothbrush and soap a couple of times, most of the rust went and left a relatively clean PCB. The caps seem to be slightly blown and probably leaky, but all in all it looks promising already. After some drying, let's take a closer look at all the damage. It looks a lot better already, but there is still a lot of rust on the game port, also the crystal oscillator still didn't get rid of its rust underneath. Most of the other parts do look great actually. The caps have definitely to be replaced, but it's not a big problem. There is also still some dirt left in between. Yeah, and the game port is in really bad condition. The rust got partially through the metal completely. I think it has to be replaced. Okay, as I said, this card is really not the best, so I'm not going to invest money in new parts. But what can be done? In the scrap there was another very similar card which I can use as a donor. Take a look at this. Metal scrap hunters are doing such terrible things. They cut off the slots in the hope to get a little bit of gold and copper out of it. If one of them is watching, please stop doing this. There is nearly no gold inside and if you just sell the card as is in working condition, you would probably get by far much more money than by just cutting off the edges, so please stop doing that. Anyway, this card was just half cut for some reason, but in this shape it is definitely destroyed. However, all the parts here are in good shape and I can use this card as a donor to repair our rusty patient. As you can see, the game port looks as good as new and the card also still has its slot bracket. I just removed it already to see if there is some rust underneath, but it all looks clean. Furthermore, the difference of this card to the one which I am trying to repair is that this one has these two amplifier ICs and some complementary parts around, which are not installed on the other card. So my mission now is to transplant everything what belongs to the amplifier circuitry and replace all the rusty parts like the game port through the new old and shiny ones. And as you can see, all the holes are free again and ready to get new parts inserted. Under the game port there is still a lot of dirt. Since the card didn't have any amplifier before, the traces were just hardwired. I want to install a real jumper to be able to switch between amplified and non-amplified output.
As I was cleaning the pads to transplant the surrounding SMD components, unfortunately I ripped off the pad. So I'll have to add a batch wire here to fix the issue. When soldering two rows of pin headers, it is easier if you put some jumpers across them. This way the pins will keep up right and parallel to each other. Ready. I will not exchange the audio ports, since they look quite good. I hope that they are in just as good shape from the inside. I'll just add some deoxide to clean the contacts. Let's add the jumpers to enable the amplifier. Yeah, looks almost as good as new. Let's remove the sticker residues using WD-40. And a little bit of cleaning with IPA. And the sound card is ready to test. I'll use this tiny 36DX40 mainboard, so I will not show you much of a fancy game action, but it is more than enough to hear some sound. I'm going to use original TerraTech drivers. I believe these are the same as for the Base 1 sound card. And what a nice surprise! As you can see, the card seems to be detected and initialized with all the RQ, DMA and other settings. I honestly was not expecting it to work, if you remember its initial condition. Now it's time for some music. First test is going to be Doom. Right away, a trained ear instantly recognizes the difference. Here I made a recording with the original Yamaha OBL3. As you can hear, it is not really awful. 
Not like there are missing notes or other obvious bugs, but it sounds pretty much different. Here is another example, Duke Nukem 3D. First, the analog devices implementation. Now the original Yamaha OPL3. It is not the point of this video to compare the FM sound, but the analog devices card seems also to have some reverb overlay, so it's not quite easy to tell what sounds better. It doesn't sound like original OPL3, that's for sure, but I can tell that it sounds bad for me. I'm even positively surprised. I had it worse in memory. Anyway, one more example, Prince of Persia. FM sounds again not like the original, but this game is notorious for DMA clicking bug in digital sound. And as you hear, no clicking at all. That sounds quite decent in my opinion. And so, here it is. Once left to die in its own rust and though the card is working again. It even looks almost as good as new. The S in TT1816-S means a version without an amplifier. Well, this has now been changed and actually the card should be called TT1816N but this is now a part of its history. I actually didn't plan to make any comparison of this card to the original OPL3, but all in all, I found it to be better than I remember it from back then. Not only that I got the card working, the decent audio quality was a surprise for me as well. There is, by the way, also no noise. Not at all, actually. What is remarkable for an ISA card, keeping in mind how cheaply most of them were made. By the way, I restored two cards from that pile, which were in such an awful condition. The second one was a Cyrus Logic PCI graphics card, which you can see here. You know, I repair a lot of stuff for fun, and I not always do videos about it, because to cut and release a video is usually by far more effort than the repair itself. So, unfortunately, I didn't make any recordings of that repair, but here how it looks like now. I cleaned the PCB in the same way as with the sound card, replaced the ROM socket, installed the BIOS chip and polished away the rust from the metal parts. You still can see some holes in the metal, which were already eaten away by the rust. 
I'm glad to say that this card is now also completely operational and I am glad to have it. It has a superb compatibility and is quite fast as well. It misses a slot bracket, but I'm going to use it as a test card anyway, so I don't need the bracket now. Maybe I will find one which will fit one day. Well, and this is for today. Hope you liked it and I would be glad to see you on my channel again. More restoration and repair videos will follow soon and so far thank you and goodbye.